We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing in the freaks are coming out now. Hello, everyone. It is AEW Unrestricted. Hello, good morning, Thursday. If you're listening to this or Monday, if you're a couple days delayed watching the video podcast. But you've got Aubrey Edwards and you've got Will Washington. How you doing, Will? I am doing great. It's March. I mean, we're reaching the end of March. I can't believe we're this. Actually, it is the end of March. I'm still accidentally writing 2022 on everything. (laughs) And we're like 12 weeks into 2024. And I'm just like. "Ah." Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I had that the other day where I had lunch with a friend. And she was talking about her six year old daughter. And I was like, you can't have a six year old daughter. She was born in 2018. And uh, she's like, yeah, six. Yeah. And I went, well, yeah. Oh, I guess that is true. Yeah. When you make the realization that you've been alive for longer since 2000 than you were alive before 2000, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, why did you, you say that? You just not realized yeah. that because I said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But yeah, uh, look, it, it's it's Women's History Month. It's March. Yes. Uh, we have a lot going on in the women's divisions across AEW and Ring of Honor. Talking about uh, just over on AEW, we've had the debut of Mercedes Monet, oh, killing it at Big Business. And then uh, the following week in Toronto. And, and then, of course, we had the women's street fight in Toronto, which was... Uh, incredible. It was incredible. Willow, now the first person to participate in three... And she got to drop that in the promo. Yes, I saw. I noticed yeah. that. I was like, oh, that was good line. Good stat. <laughs> yeah, it's a good little stat. Speaking of stat, like Statlander was in that same match, which was, was absolutely incredible. And like Julia and Sky, like when one of them brought out tax and then the other one brought out tax. I'm Such like, a moment. Oh, this is going to be good. But it's I, I mean, you've got Tony Storm has been killing it. And then Mariah May as Tony Storm has been killing it. Like, I didn't think anyone could be better than Tony Storm as Tony Storm, but Mariah is like having me question it a little bit. Athena has has been like just owning Ring of Honor for for months, almost uh, like over a year now at this point. You've got well Billy over, Starks is really yeah. coming to her own. Like, you've just got all of these women. And, and Sheeta just taking this place in Ring of Honor and she just had that match with Rachel Ellering to remind everybody yes. that, hey, I'm still here. She's got a huge match coming up at at Supercard of Honor uh, against Athena for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship. But then also we've got other things coming up at Supercard of Honor as well. To be a woman and to be a part of wrestling history, to see all of these things kind of happening all at once has been really incredible. And seeing all the growth of our female talent in the locker room has been really awesome. And I feel like with it being March... We kind of have to make sure that we promote one of those really, really important women that is making history during Women's History Month and really like during the 11 months out of the year. So, Will, yes, we who do. is our guest today? Our guest today, Aubrey, is someone that AEW fans have become quite familiar with as of late. I have grown this strong affinity to. She's the one and only one true African wrestler. It is Queen Aminata. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. I'm I'm so legitimately excited because getting to know you over the last like few months especially and seeing your growth not only as a wrestler but as like a person and then all of the little like quips we have on show day where you're like, "Do you know anything yet?" I'm like, "How long have you worked here?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited you're here. The fan response to you has been so great to see, like people just falling in love with you the same way that we have. So I'm very happy that you're here because it's like, yay, how could we not have you on the show during Women's History Month? This is just so wonderful. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. I'm excited too. And and you've got a lot coming up because you've now made it to the finals of the Ring of Honor uh, Women's Television Title Tournament. Yes. You're going to be taking on Billy Starks at... Yeah. Super card of honor. I want to talk about the journey to the finals of this tournament. You had an incredible match against Red Velvet in the semifinals. Genuinely just a phenomenal match. But honestly, you've had a great run in this tournament. Um, I want to talk about how this all came together and how that's been for you. Honestly, there is no secret. You work for so, so many years and you hope to deliver, you know, and just one day just clicks, you know. And then especially coming back from what I went through last year, I just had one goal in mind. 
go out there, have fun, do what you love. And in the process, just, you know, whatever happens, happens. That's just how I go about life now. I feel like there's so much happening all at once because you're killing yeah. it on Ring of Honor. But at the same time on AEW, we're seeing you also kind of have this growth and this awesomeness. So like yeah. back in February on the 14th, you got your AEW Queen Aminata is All Elite yeah. on Rampage, <laughs> I think when you beat Anna J. And one of my favorite things was that you tweeted afterwards, like, Dad, I did it. And knowing kind yeah. of like your relationship with your father and everything you kind of went through, what did that moment mean for you? I want to say it would have been better if it was alive, but I don't have any control over that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm proud because everything that I've sacrificed, you know, along the way to make it to where I'm at today. Like my goal, honestly, was to tell him when I get signed, hey, dad, I got signed. Finally, I'm not oh. going to hide. But that didn't happen. So now I just have to like keep it in my heart and just just go about it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No more crying. I promise myself. No more crying. Oh, no. It's a, no. I mean, I was sitting here like, how long are we going to get into this podcast before one of us starts crying? No, no more crying. <laughs> no. Crying is good. It's healthy. It's therapeutic. You worked hard for it. You're allowed to be emotional. <laughs> True. I, I was in the same way I felt for you the moment you tweeted that and uh, the moment it all got to happen. And it is just a really cool moment. And I'm really, really happy for you. Thank you. You know, I, I want to talk about a moment that fans really gravitated toward earlier this year. You on uh, in another Rampage match back in Jacksonville had a match with a Karushita. Yeah. Uh, still probably one of my favorite in-ring moments. You went for a pin. You got a two count. You went back for the pin, got another two count, and then went, that's four. And that, to me... <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> ...was so good. That was still one of my favorite in-ring moments. You and I have talked about it, but, like, for the audience, how did that come together? Well, since we can't hide nothing in wrestling... <laughs> Maybe people don't know, but I did two tours in Japan. So I I love the Japanese style. I feel like I mix both styles, like, you know, in the ring. And I think it was when I was there the second time, one of my friends did that, you know, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to keep that in my back pocket. You just never know. And then that day, I just, I wrestled Shishia. It was so cold, you know, like the first bump, I was like, oh my God, my body. I, I just need to make this thing fun for me. No Ishida, you know, Japanese style. I was like, I know she's going to get it. You got to have the perfect opponent to do some crazy things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So finally I did it. I was like, oh, I'm glad I kept this in my back pocket. <laughs> 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 and I saw the fan retweeting stuff like that. They were laughing about it. I was so happy because I want to be in the ring. I want to fight. Like, I want to do all these crazy things. But at the same time, I want them to know, hey, I can have fun. You know what I mean? Just... Just go with the flow. I mean, it wasn't mathematically incorrect. Right? So technically, I won that she's, match. She's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we refs are just generally bad at counting above three anyway, or we're bad at counting to three in general. So it was just like, oh, thank you for doing the math for us. This was great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we would have functioned without you. So yeah, on top of that, highly like agree. It is just cold in Jacksonville and I don't think people like fully forget it so the fact that you can have as hard a hitting match as you can outdoors in any time that's not summer is just like oh god yeah. it was incredible so I don't think people fully appreciate like how incredible that match was just given all of the like weather issues that we run into all the time in Jacksonville yeah I know it hit, like when the heat you it hurts a little extra but I'm like Ugh, okay yeah, I had been warned all along about Daly's place in January, Dude. particularly by Aubrey. And uh, I wasn't ready for how it actually felt. I can't even imagine being in the ring with like you have kind of that isolated space. Yeah. And so you don't at least have like the warmth of having multiple bodies around you. Yeah. And so uh, hats off to just being able to keep it together and find a way to, to make it work. To make it funny, too. Like, oh, so awesome. This is such an awesome conversation. We're talking with Queen Aminata here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, much more to talk about. 
It is AEW Unrestricted. We had Aubrey and Will, and we're talking to the one, the only, Queen Aminata. So one of the things that is, I mean, we talk about Women's History Month, but you are literally making history. You are the first African-born wrestler signed to a major company. And that is just so absolutely wonderful. Like, it's one thing to already get signed to a major company, but to come from another country and to succeed here. And you've also done multiple tours in Japan, as you mentioned in our first segment. What is it like coming to America, coming from another country? And why did you choose Ohio? (laughs) I think that's where I'm going with this. Like of all places, Ohio. No offense to Ohio, but like Ohio. (laughs) <laughs> what's wrong with ohio i mean it's it's i don't think we got enough time on this podcast <laughs> well yeah ohio is cold i love ohio but um anyways coming from guinea i want to say there's nothing special about it but there's so much more because people from here don't know guinea or i mean they know africa it's like africa what's africa you know what i mean so i just wanted to give them something that they don't know, like tell them a story without talking to them, like showing them, hey, this is where I'm from, but this is what you get. Because I feel like the best education, even with my kids, sometimes I don't like to tell them how to do things. I like to show them, Mm -hmm. especially like being signed. This is a bigger company, like a major platform for me. So what a better way like for me to just express myself like show people my culture like my accent how proud I am to walk in there with my cape and like all the stuff that I wear and it's funny sometimes because some fan is like oh my god like that's just fake accent like no you're are you really from Africa like what the hell and I'm like yes honey I was born and raised in Africa I still go back and but I just had bigger dreams that I couldn't realize in Africa so I just took you know, a chance on me and I gave him my own. I just said, hey, go hard or go home. And I feel like I have two homes now. I have USA and I have Africa. So I'm happy to be here. At the same time, I miss home, but I'm so thankful again for everything that I that I got, you know, I'm building here and I know there is many more to come. So, yeah. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, and it's actually not even in my notes, but I'm remembering it from the last podcast we did. Oh, wow. I wanted to ask you about your education, very specifically, because it's very unique to hear from from a professional wrestler, um, particularly in the case of what you actually got a degree in. Oh, I don't know any of this. <laughs> yeah. So please tell the audience a little bit of your educational background. Well... <laughs> I have a master in private international law. Whoa, what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why don't we have this girl on an international, like a, like an office contract? Jeez. You know, no office contract for me. I'm too juicy for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mention that in my annual review. Just tell Nick Sobic, like, sorry, I'm too juicy for that. <laughs> yes. You know, um, my dad, actually, he went to school for two years. The third year, he um, his mom passed away and... He's from a a tiny, tiny village back home. So he decided to become a uh, mechanic. And that's how everything started for him. So when he started having kids, I was actually bored while he was like traveling, looking for auto parts and stuff like that. He promised himself one thing. He said, my kids will have the education that I never had. So I went to private school from day one all the way to university. And I had the choice to go to like private university or, you know, public university. I said, dad, I want to experience the public university. I want to take taxi. I want to do this and I want to do that with my friends. And he let me do that for one year. And that's when he was like, okay, well, since you're in university, because I went to university before I turned 18, I wasn't that smart. I was just a little bit smart. You know what I mean? (laughs) You're you're very smart. Like, don't, don't downplay it. (laughs) And then he was like, hey, you want to move to actually France instead? And I was like, well, why not? But he didn't finance it for me. So I got it through, um, we call it Campus France. It's a lottery stuff. Like when you have like good grades and they get to finance your schools and stuff like that. So I went through that. I went to France. I did my master's. And one year after taking my high, I don't know how you say that in English. Like you graduate and now you're able to work. Mm-hmm. I said, I want to speak English. I'm moving to America. But I didn't tell him that. 
when I told him finally, hey, dad, okay, I'm here on vacation, but actually I'm not going back to France. I am going to America. Wait, what? America? You don't speak English. We don't know anybody there. I was like, well, I do. So here I am in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> One of those like, where you just buy a one-way ticket, but don't tell your parents like, yeah, I'm just going to go. Yeah. I'll be back eventually. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to come. And I came, I found wrestling and I was like, well, at least I, ha- I can go back from being a lawyer, but I'm not trying to go back. I'm going to make it as a wrestler and then tell him. So how do you make the transition from a master's student in international law in France to, you know what, I'm going to go to America and be a wrestler? (laughs) Where does that mental jump happen? Believe it or not, since I was in um, high school, I used to play soccer. I would run. I would do so on water. I don't like, so where you jump on the sand, like the further, like... The long jump. The long jump. So I used to do all that. I was really into sport. But back then, like... Even going to the gym, people look at me funny, like, why are girls coming to the gym? Like, what are you doing here? Or lifting weight, like, why are you just go do your cardio? But I was always the stubborn kind, and I'm like, daddy's there to back me up. Like, you can't talk to me like that. You know what I mean? So I love sports. Why not? Let's, let me just try it. And I tried boxing in um, friends, and they boxed my nose one. I was like, no, I don't want to mess up my nose. Like, no, I don't want to touch my face. Let me find something else. <laughs> <laughs> then here I am <laughs> in America wrestling. Now, this is the one. We have to make it. We have to make it. And uh, we're here. <laughs> and, and you are absolutely making it. And of course, you you mentioned uh, you didn't know any English uh, coming to America, but now you speak four languages. Yes, I know. I started learning English back in 2013 because that's when I moved here. I'm still learning because you have some stuff that I can't say at all. And honestly, it's just funny to me. I'm like, I just go with it. But I do speak now English, 70%. Let's just put it that way. French and my dad's native language and my mom's native language, which is so, so and fluent. That's incredible. So which one is the hardest language to learn between English and French? English. Between the four, which do the majority of your thoughts occur in? Ooh. Oh, French. Really? Interesting. Yeah. So sometimes, like, yeah, I'll be like, give me a second, let me translate. I will be talking and I will just say something in French randomly. I was like, I'm sorry, that's not English. That's French because I'm still like translating in my head. But for some reason, I will do that with Scott and she'll be like, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so let's talk about your relationship with Sky Blue because you two are very, very good friends. Yeah, we are. When did your uh, friendship start? Was that at AEW or was that beforehand? No, in the Indies. Oh, that's awesome. We started in the Indies. And yeah, we kept it going and just love at first sight, you know? <laughs> that's my wife right there. <laughs> I don't, you, yep, you, work wife. You two are, are some of my favorites to be around at television. I think you guys just have such an infectious, infectious friendship. The two of you, uh, everybody has seen you two as friends to the point of where when a match is announced between you two, it's like, okay... <laughs> We know that there's some fun that's about to be had here. And I was so excited for you guys to have that most recent match you guys had because going back to your injury beforehand, um, it was yeah. nice to kind of get to to meet again on television this time. Um, and it was like kind of yeah. right at the height of Sky Blue and her heel turn and the rise of her character. So it was really cool to get to see you guys get to do that in the ring. I remember how excited she was when I got to tell her who her opponent was. <laughs> uh, so it, I said all that to say, the friendship that you guys have is, it, I think, a unique and special one that I think most people should want to find in professional wrestling. Am I remembering correctly, though, that you're allergic to her cat? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I always take my medication like when I'm there with her, but her cat is always like in my bag and always I'm like, Shaggy, go. You know, I can't touch you, but he's always around. And I'm like, no. Cats are natural heels. Like they find the person that either doesn't like cats or is allergic to cats. And then those are the people they attach to. And it's like, why are you being an asshole? I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, I deal with it. So you you deal with it when you've got a friendship that is that is so like strong and yeah and powerful and yeah no I'm I'm legitimately jealous of you guys I'm like man I wish I had like a work wife relationship the way that, like I'm not a, it's a I'm, blessing honestly it's a blessing it's so cute it's so wonderful <laughs> and it's to see it kind of come full circle because you know we kind of mentioned like your your injury you had had a knee injury in uh February 2023 was it in your match with Sky Blue yes yeah, dude. And then you like, you end up going and having surgery. All of these things happen. Like, what was that time period like? To be honest, I've been in the medical field and I never truly believed in depression, but that was my first time ever experiencing that type of pain and loneliness and feeling lost. Mm -hmm. It just kept on adding and adding and adding and I asked myself one day, I'm like, is this really the life that you want to leave? Not to the point like, hey, I want to harm myself. Like, I'm not to that point, but like to the point where I'm like, do you really want to keep trying? Because mm -hmm. it's not working for you right now. So that's when I just log off and no social media, nothing. Just I was out completely, just trying to find myself again. Going through that and coming back to wrestling, like I really had to think about it multiple times. If this is what you want to do again, then you have to make sure you do it the best. You have to make sure no matter what happens, nobody can tell you, you did this wrong. They have to tell you you did it wrong in your own way. You have to be that good. You have to be that certain. You have to be just the best version of you. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have in my head right now. So every match, every, I don't know, encounter, like whatever I do, even going to the gym or Waking up early, nothing bothers me anymore because I know what I went through. So I guess AEW be ready. Because <laughs> have it works. <laughs> Just be ready. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, this has been honestly an incredible conversation. And we've got so much more to talk about. And I want to get into a lot more in this final leg of the podcast. And we'll do that right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey and Will, and we're talking to the one true African woman wrestler, Queen Aminata. Uh, I want to talk about the character that is really, in a lot of ways, an extension of yourself in so many different ways. It's like, you know, we, we do everything in wrestling, obviously, is, is turned up just to 11. Talk to me about exactly what made you want to bring that, I mean, bring your character to such a genuine place? I used to watch wrestling when I was back home with my dad and my um, grandmother. So fast forward to when I started wrestling. I think when I first started, I wanted to be the American wrestler. And then I was getting lost in the process because I'm like, there's something missing. It's just not genuine. I just, just was just, I don't know, a robot, or something like that. And one day my trainer was like, hey, just be you. Don't care about anybody else. Just be you. Do you. And I was like, okay, what is doing me? Because I was so lost. I'm like, what is doing me? Like, what are you talking about? That's when I started adding the crown, the cape, the necklace. Oh, let me just speak some African and like in the ring until I find exactly what I wanted to do. And that's how I started recreating again Aminata and I was like oh well this woman is just not a woman she's more than that she's a queen she's a change she's the first mm -hmm. she's the one so I just started adding these layers and layers and layers and I'm like nobody will ever represent me better than me and nobody will ever talk about me way more than I will be able to talk about myself reason why I hate doing interviews because people were misinterpreting because they see me they're just oh you're just not the queen. So I was like, if I talk less, they will listen more. Because if you talk more, they will listen less. Mm. Here I am at AW, still doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing the same, but like so well, though. Like the character you've developed over the course of your wrestling career and then bringing it to AEW, you just feel so confident. That's one of the reasons why I love working with you in the ring is that confidence you bring. It comes through in your character, in your entrance, especially like mm -hmm. in your wrestling style. It's just so 
infectious. And I love working with it because I feel like it makes me more confident. Like the Aubrey oh. character is kind of this like super confident version of Brittany. But like, I'm like, oh, if I'm with Queen, like, <laughs> yeah, no, let's rock and roll. This is oh, awesome. So like, thank, thank you, you for doing that. No, thank you. <laughs> it's one of those like, we talk about other women being inspirational and it's like, you're freaking doing that. I don't know if you realize you're doing that with your coworkers, but like, I'm telling you right here, like you're doing oh. it with me. So thank you so much for like, just being yourself and being genuine. Oh, it's so good. That makes me happy. Of course. Uh, so I want to go back to a little bit because you said you did two tours in Japan. Yeah. How does something like that happen? Because it was back in 2020. Uh, so you had already been in America for a little bit. You had been wrestling for a bit. How do you end up going to Japan? And what were those experiences like for you? Actually, the first time when I went there, one of my really good friends on the Indies, um, now I call her my sister, Rainy and Rachel, Mm-hmm. went to Japan. And when she came back, the Japanese promotion had asked her, hey, do you have any other girl to recommend? I think I was two or three years into wrestling. And then she said, I know this one girl. She's very young, but I know she's going to learn. She's not because it takes certain type of people to survive in Japan, like the dojo life, because it's not for everybody. I can tell you guys that. So she finally recommended me and I went. Honestly, I clear my head. I am not a wrestler. I'm just a beginner. Let me start from zero. I just had, I don't know, an amazing tour. Matches wise, I won't say amazing because I was still finding myself. But then the second time when they said, oh, you want to come back? I said, why not? (laughs) So I ended up going this time. It was amazing. It was completely different. And Mm. that's one of the reasons too, I'm so glad I'm with AEW because I know I can go back to Japan and still, you know, work those Japanese style, work the different style. So I think if I hadn't been in Japan, I didn't, I don't think I would be the queen Aminata that I am today because he affected every single thing that I, that I do in the ring, honestly. So I'm very thankful. Yeah, and that goes kind of back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show. Some of the things you've picked up and, and included in your matches. And talking about those very matches that you've had this year, you have really run the gamut as far as AEW is concerned. You have had, talking about the litany of opponents you've had, when we talk about Hikaru Shida, we talk about Chris Statlander, we talk about Mariah May, we talk about Thunder Rosa. When we talk about all of those names, those are obviously like top tier names as far as AEW is concerned. And I said all that to say that in every single one of those matches, and I know you pay attention to these things, so don't tell me you don't. What is it? <laughs> the buzz around the match was around you. Mm-hmm. And it it didn't necessarily blow my mind because I know you and I know I know what to expect. But it, it do you ever find yourself surprised that coming out of every single one of those matches with, again, we're talking about world class, we're talking about elite level talent, that the conversation was about Queen Amanada? Surprise? No. Honestly, I'm not going to say I'm surprised. But like expecting it to happen right now at this moment, yes. But also, I think it goes to say that if you're in the ring with somebody and you guys are willing to work together, no matter what, no matter their background, how many years they've been working, no matter what they bring on the table, are they willing to work with you? Are they not willing to work with you? Just clean plate. Mm -hmm. I don't think you will ever have a bad match with somebody. I don't care what anybody says. Because I've been wrestling, yes, I'm still young. I've been wrestling for seven years. But I think with my personal experience, I don't care who steps in the ring with me. I tell them from the get-go, tell me what you want to do. And I will make sure I deliver that the best way that I can. If I can deliver that for you, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for you. But I feel like the fans can so, like, they're so into our matches. They can relate to everything. And they're smart fans, too. They can see. So there is no way you're going to step in the ring with Queen Aminata and be like, oh, yeah, I always come with my 50%. No, just my body language will tell you right away. You're going to come in this match 100%. And I'm not giving you a choice. That's point blank. And this is where my sassiness comes a little bit because I'm like, oh, a little we bit. We can't do this. Like, we cannot. <laughs> you cannot talk about changing it like in wrestling and like okay women wrestling this and that and then you still act the same way this goes again to say you talk less and you do more you wrestle more and you train more you don't wrestle more and then you train less or like oh yeah 
I'm fine. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. No, you have to be ready 24 seven because this is a 365 day a year business. Right. So that's how I see things. So am I surprised? No, because I believe in my hard work and dedication. That's your answer right there. <laughs> yeah, love it. So we, we had talked a little bit about this before we were recording, but you mentioned you were up at 3 a.m. today. Yeah, I'm up at 3.30 every day. <laughs> 3.30. And, and why do you do that? <laughs> uh, I'm a queen. <laughs> if I can do it and they can do it, that's the difference right there. I mean, this goes to say, I listen to Kobe Bryant a lot. And he says, if you can work every single day for one year, imagine your opponent, they're just working maybe three times a week. How many times are you ahead of them? And you do that for two years, three years, four years, five years. What can they say? So if I can travel, like go to TV and land, let's, let's say I'm landing in LA tonight, tomorrow, 3.30, I'm up, I train. By 6, I'm, I'm at the, my hotel room, eat, maybe take a nap. And then if call time is 2 p.m., I'm there by 1 p.m. So I can roll and do some stuff. You know what I mean? And then before people get in the building, I'm already rolling, I'm already hyped. So you're getting ready to roll around and I'm already thinking about my match. So I'm already two or three steps ahead of you. So by the time it's time for my match, I'm not rushing. I'm calm. I'm breathing. I'm sinking in. I'm just, I'm just me. So I can go to the next step. There's no secret. Just work hard and stop bitching around. If I can say that. <laughs> you can absolutely say that. I think, I think people forget, even though we have two days of TV a week, Wednesday, Saturday, like, as you said, this is a 365 day job. If you are dedicated and if you want to succeed and feel that you can succeed, you have to be working every day. Yeah. It's not just, you know, like, oh, well, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you're, you're up, you're in the gym, you're training, you're in the ring, you're making sure you're eating well, you're doing all these things. So the fact that you're able to do all of that, I appreciate that you like mention it because it's like, yes, this business is hard, man. And especially like facing the issues that like women face in the world where it's yeah. just like you have to work twice as hard for half the credit, right? It's I love that you're killing it. I love it so much. Oh, thank you. I have to kill it. I have a whole continent to represent that. I don't take that lightly. I also have a whole company that I might not be the face of the company, but I'm going to be the heart of the company. And that's, that's the goal. You're not the face yet. 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 Let's put it that way. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're getting there. I, I love it. And uh, genuinely, uh, I also love that you listen to Kobe Bryant because immediately I was like, yeah, if there was anybody who is the true embodiment of being a, what is it? A different animal, but the same beast. It is Queen Aminata. So mm, honestly, thank no, thank you. Thank you for being here at AEW Unrestricted. This has been awesome. It's been an awesome conversation and it's great to allow the AEW audience to get to know a little bit more of who you are and why you bring what you bring to the table to the table. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was so wonderful. Oh my God. You can listen to episodes of this podcast every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can watch the video and just see how freaking beautiful Queen of God is. New episodes every Monday. And make sure you watch all of the crazy things that are happening with AEW and ROH. You can watch Dynamite on Wednesdays on TBS. You can watch ROH on Honor Club on Thursdays. You can watch Rampage on TNT on Fridays. You can watch Collision on TNT on Saturdays. And, and you know what's crazy? She's on all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just killing it all over the place. Like you want your Queen Aminata, watch friggin' anything that we offer and you will see this bitch doing amazing shit. So Ooh, there you go. Thank you. Right? <laughs> there you go. Like I am Aubrey Edwards along with Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Thank you guys. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gonna turn it up. And then the freaks are coming out now. Uh, uh, on the street. Uh, uh, on the street.